All right, tech enthusiasts, I have to say, my Apple Vision Pro headset order is in. I'm really kind of super excited to check this thing out. And I haven't been a big proponent of like AR, VR type things. I never did any of the Google Glasses type stuff. I never had a PSVR. I've never even really used an Oculus, MetaQuest, and any of that stuff. I'm one that's usually actually prone to getting motion sick. I don't do carnival rides and roller coasters and stuff like that. I don't even like riding in the back of a car. So this is gonna be a bit of an interesting experiment. But like they often do with their stuff, I think Apple is doing, Apple is launching this product with some different sensibilities, some different focus and mentality, and may just kind of change the game. Enough that I'm very, very interested in it, and I'm really drawn to essentially how they're establishing the Vision Pro, the, the focus on like movie and home theater-esque type based entertainment. Really curious to see how all of it plays out. I have a couple other friends that are picking them up as well. So we're gonna be talking about the Vision Pro coming up here on the channel and rest assured it's going to be very much from the perspective of is the Vision Pro, can the Vision Pro be a premium home theater, immersive enveloping entertainment type of device. But in this video, I specifically, I wanted to talk about a few of the things that I'm most excited to try, a few of the things that led me to going ahead and putting an order in. Again, I am all confirmed. I will have the headset on February 2nd. I did order the 512 gigabyte version, $36.99. Um, I am gonna do the Apple Store pickup where they'll have you come in and they can make sure that you have the right fit and, and all of that rather than, than just having it delivered to the house. And I wanna go live with the thing right away and put, put information and my opinions and content out there immediately. So there's really kind of four elements that I'm, that I'm eager to test, that I'm eager, that, <clears throat> that led me to going ahead and making that order. Of course, number one is the home theater use. That's the main topic on the channel here. I have the, the full scale, dedicated, multi-channel surround sound, big screen projection based home theater room as well as this living room, which is very capable itself, 83 inch OLED and a 2.2 premium audio system. But I'm really, really curious to see what are the home theater chops uh, of the Vision Pro? What can it actually deliver? We may have the possibility here of a device that can do effectively large scale equivalent projection uh, of many inch equivalent theater display with the performance characteristics and picture quality and fidelity of something like the OLED. Having both, I can definitely say there's there's so many merits uh, to the picture that like this LG G2 can put out and it just absolutely destroys the fidelity, the general fidelity of what a projector is capable of. But of course that projector downstairs is throwing up 163 inch scope image, nearly twice as large as the image that I get out of the television here in the living room. And if the Vision Pro can bring both of those things together, size and scale and immersion, massively bright HDR, OLED level, complete blacks in this nice focused, like isolated environment, it could really become like a premium space, a premium way to end up watching movie, high quality TV show content. So what will it look like? How will it perform? It is, I'm just so eager to put it on and take a look. Apple's pulling out all the stops. Um, iTunes content is being updated. They're working with some of the other streaming companies and such, like Disney Plus is having a bunch of content specially formatted, let alone going to like 3D and spatial video type of formats that they're doing. There's supposed to be something like 150 movies on iTunes getting the updates. Could this actually, actually herald a massive quality boost in iTunes provided video that not only benefits the Vision Pro, but filters down to the Apple TV. Better fidelity, higher bit rates, all that sort of stuff. We'll see. It's making me very excited thinking about the possibilities, not only about where this starts, but more so even like where it goes and where it leads to. I think there'll be a lot of uh, questions as well about like, okay, can a Vision Pro be your home theater? You know, what if, there, if there's just one of you, it's a really easy or kind of choice. If you're a couple or you're a family though, how does that work out? It's get, it could get very expensive buying these for everybody. Are you gonna go sit in your dedicated theater space perhaps and, and everybody puts these things on and wears them? But one of the things that resonates for me about the cost that I haven't really heard anybody mention is a high-end projector, let's say a really, really good premium projector for a dedicated home theater, something like a top-end Sony 
uh, or a JVC NZ9 is a $25,000 projector. I could buy four Apple Vision Pros for my family instead of an NZ9 projector and keep effectively about $11,000 in my pocket, saving money. It's very much like I would look in this next year or perhaps uh, this year or the year coming to be upgrading my projector to something like a JVC NZ9. Maybe the Vision Pro will completely negate the need or the draw desire to do that. I think the Vision Pro is really going to challenge some assumptions that I may have already been making about what I wanted to do in my entertainment spaces, in, in my dedicated home theater, especially when when I get it and we kind of and I put it through its paces. Part and parcel with this idea is as much as I think it can deliver really high fidelity video and perhaps be the pinnacle device for video presentation, audio is going to be really where it struggles. And I haven't heard anybody else really talking about this either. Like we may have this best awesome video presentation, but are you really going to watch a, a high end premium movie? with just speakers shooting some spatial audio like down above your ears you know is that going to be good a good audio experience and if you're watching my channel as a home theater enthusiast you've probably got a room of like high-end premium speakers high-end processing receivers subwoofers and all of that sort of thing there's no way these little speakers are doing the kind of bass that a lot of you out there you know have in your rooms and have in your spaces and if you extrapolate from there, you know, what's a pair of AirPods? Eh, who cares about that? Maybe I'm going to find myself regretting, actually, that I returned, or, or resold, rather, uh, the Focal Bathys headphones that I had bought, maybe wearing a Vision Pro and wearing a high-end pair of over-the-ear headphones at the same time is going to be something that wants to go together. And if the Vision Pro can send the audio to the headphones, that would work. But then now we're talking about a couple pounds of stuff on our head, and, and how's that going to work for, for an extended like two hour, three hour period of time? I just don't know. I think Apple has the ability though with the Vision Pro and an Apple TV to be able to link these things together. We already have built into the Apple ecosystem this concept of share play, meaning like sending synced playback of, of content to multiple devices. And if they did it, it would be so easy to be wearing a Vision Pro um, and have an Apple TV connected to your high end theater preamplifier, your stereo system preamplifier, of course wiring out to your amplifiers, your high-end speakers, your multi-channel Dolby Atmos surround system, uh, your subwoofers and all of that stuff and just have the Vision Pro share play to the Apple TV. Now that audio uh, can be around you enveloping you with all of your premium audio equipment in the room in the space while you're consuming the content with this pinnacle premium a video presentation and those things could go together so well if they did it now the most recent apple tv tvos had had feature notes had feature bullets talking about enabling share play for dolby atmos and immersive codecs and all of that i have to believe somebody over there somebody in apple is thinking about this and if they're not call me because i need to come work there and we'll make this whole thing just fa absolutely fantastic and all of these different elements of the ecosystem hook up the way that they're supposed to. So yeah, aud audio is going to be the big question. They can nail video so easy, but doing audio well in a way that appeals to, to this device really functioning as a home theater uh, replacement evolutionary device, audio is going to be the big question mark. So my number two use case is actually reading. I'm a huge comic book fan. If you're already a, a channel uh, subscriber in the community you saw I just set up this awesome comic book display uh, in in the back of my office uh, longtime comic book reader I spend a good amount of time using my iPad uh, reading digital comic books I read on Kindle slash comiXology I subscribe to Marvel Unlimited I subscribe to DC Infinite DC Universe Infinite and so many an evening um, I'll be laying here on the couch usually laying with my head facing this way laying back and I've got my iPad, you know, up here, probably, what, 18 inches or so away from my face, trying to do a full comic book page uh, in, a, in a portrait mode. And then a lot of times comic books have like dual pages or splash pages. So you have to go flip it to landscape. And then now the text gets really small. I've been hankering, really wanting like something like a 15 or a 16 inch iPad for quite a while, essentially just for comic book reading make those pages bigger so i can see the art 
I can com and so I can comfortably read all of the lettered in text. But man, let's put on a Vision Pro. Let's look at a comic book page. Let's talk about like being immersed in the art and having no problem at all, like reading the text and, and paging through, let alone the fact that even a, even a 13 inch iPad holding it for a while, my arms, they tend to fall asleep. They get tingly. So if I can just sit back here, right, put this thing on my head, my arms are free. I can do some little hand gestures and tapping and whatever to make the pages go by. I think it could be a fantastic like graphic novel visual reading uh, type of type of device. I even wonder like, you know, Kindle books and stuff maybe would be the most expensive Kindle reader. So I think it lends itself a little bit more to reading graphical, graphically comic books or whatnot than just text-based things. Uh, but still, I'm, I'm very excited to test this. It's another area, another element that I haven't seen really anybody uh, talking about um, on, on any other videos or Reddits uh, or whatnot. So that's something that I'm very eager to try. I'm very hopeful I'm crossing my fingers. iPad apps will just work because I, I would expect, I don't know, maybe like Kindle, Marvel, DC. I don't know if they're making Vision Pro specific stuff, if they have this thing on their radar. If they don't, hey, the tech uh, groups of those companies call me. Let, let's make some awesome Vision Pro apps for comic book reading, immersive environments, envelopments, and all that sort of thing. But at a bare minimum, I hope that with this, it can actually just at least fire it up day one and be able to load the regular old kind of flat 2D iPad apps, but get that size, get that dimension, and get that immersion. So number three, of course, the whole concept of spatial computing, the whole concept of having like a spatial multitasking environment is a huge draw to me. Um, I'm gonna be eager to try it both at my desk doing office work, as well as, again, sitting kind of here on the couch in the evenings. If you look behind me just there, that's actually the monitor in my office uh, in my office seat there in the other room. I have a 43 inch Sony TV as my main display in a 16 inch MacBook. So I usually just set my MacBook um, in front of the, the larger format Sony. So I'm using two displays. I'm using the MacBook keyboard and trackpad. And there's supposed to be a bunch of awesome features whereby if you just put on a Vision Pro and you look at your MacBook, boom, they like sync. You go into this immersive kind of environment together. So I'm curious to see how, you know, how does an afternoon or a couple hours of work play out sitting there either doing day job work, which for me usually boils down to a lot of like Outlook, Microsoft Teams, PowerPoint, SharePoint, some coding tools and stuff like that, or the YouTube stuff, editing video. What is it going to be like to edit video um, in that environment? environment. I'm usually multitasking as well, meaning I'm listening to a podcast, I'm, I'm playing a YouTube video in the background. I've got multiple things up at the same time while I'm doing some work, uh, specifically work focused stuff. And if I can take in a Vision Pro environment, I can take some of those side things and put them over here, put them over there, have this main working focused area. That could be really, really cool. And in the evening, I find myself often usually multitasking as well. If I'm not reading comic books here in the evening or watching a television show or something with my wife, I'm usually surfing on the iPad, I'm researching something, I'm learning something, but I'm usually doing a lot of other stuff at the same time. Um, again, I'm playing a YouTube video in the background. Um, I might be watching like a comic book sale on Instagram, having multiple browser windows uh, and, and OneNote or, or some note-taking writing type thing open at the same time. And my, my tool of choice in my hand usually in those evenings, again, is the iPad. And it just, it just doesn't work so well for that. The screen is too small. And again, the deliberate multitasking capability to be able to put stuff in multiple windows and have it all work right isn't there. So a lot of times I will bring my MacBook in. Now I'm sitting with my laptop. There's a limit to how much I want to sit in the office all day. I think a lot of people would feel that when they're in there working. That's not the place that I want to be in the evening time after dinner, after my kids go to bed. I want out of there. Even if I'm still on a computer, I'm doing something else on that computer. I don't really want to be in there so much. If I can put this Vision Pro on, I can bring up all my stuff. I can listen to that IG comic book uh, live sale or play the YouTube videos and do some other things and surf that and surf that, look for vacations, look for whatever it may be. Um, I'm excited to try it out. I think that Apple has this idea, marketing as a spatial computing device, they just have this idea like nailed. All bets are off on, on where, where that may go. It could fail terribly or it could be some of the most kind of transformative use of an electronic device we may have felt since the advent of iPads and tablets and stuff like that. And then my last one, number four, 
of course, is gaming. I don't think you can consider a headset, a, an AR, VR type of direct spatial environment like that without considering gaming. I love, I love games. We play a bunch of games. We play Apple Arcade games. We PC game. I have a Nintendo Switch, etc. I play games with my son. But this is also the one area that I'm a little trepidatious about. Going back to my earlier comment that I'm, I'm usually a motion sick type person, uh, I feel like doing computing, doing reading, and perhaps just sitting still and watching a movie may be, may be okay for me uh, in this type of environment. However, gaming and, and the, the speed and the motion and all of that that goes with it may, may be tougher for me uh, to do, but I'm, I'm eager again, I'm eager to give it a real, a real shot and see, and see what I think. So whether that starts with again, basic Apple arcade type games that, that will probably the interest in that will probably wear thin, uh, earlier rather than later, but will, will more advanced gaming experiences come, uh, because of this thing we'll see. One of the things that I do tend to play uh, mobile a decent bit, although I have fallen off more recently, is the Marvel Snap card game. Um, that's another one of the things that I could be sitting here on the couch with my iPad, right, holding this, putting my cards into play and playing Marvel Snap. Well, let's do Marvel Snap in a Vision Pro environment, and I just have to lift my hand and drag my cards and, and stuff like that. That could be pretty darn sweet, let alone really advanced gaming. So, you know, is PlayStation 5 remote play going to be available into a Vision Pro environment or some type of local game streaming with the gaming PC. Steam, of course, does it, and there's some other ways to accomplish that as well. Sitting here on the couch, you know, grabbing the controller, playing games, high-end games, super high-fidelity graphical games on the gaming PC into the Vision Pro environment could be pretty cool. Could be vomit-inducing. I don't know yet, but it's definitely on the list of things that I want to try, and again, it's really, it's really about kind of exploring the technology. What what are going to be the capabilities within this device? What have they enabled? What are you capable of pushing into the environment? So that's my Apple Vision Pro take. Let me know uh, if, if you're in the channel community. You know, did you buy one of these things? Are you interested in it? Um, you know, if if you bought it, definitely comment as we go forward. Let me know what you're thinking of it, how you're using it, what you like, what you don't like. You know, if you're considering it or something like that, if there's use cases, there's apps, workflow, something that I can test out and comment on um, in future content, let me know as well so I can make some notes and, and think about the types of things that we, and the types of videos that I might want to make here on the channel. There's going to be a lot of tech bloggers, tech vloggers and, and whatnot, I think, covering this device and talking about it. But I feel like there's going to be a lot of like samey takes, samey type of let's say even maybe a little bit more superficial type of takes on, on what it does and how it works. And so one of the things I feel that like sets me apart and has been one of the reasons the channel has, has done well is I'm a computer engineer uh, by training and by day job uh, profession. I've got a little bit more of a technical take and I think I can try out or, or be very apt to try out some of these more involved use cases and like technology integrations and, and think about it in, in ways that maybe um, aren't just kind of more of, of a superficial take. So that's my goal. I'm hope, I'm, I'm hope I'm able to accomplish that. I'm definitely going to dive into it right away when I get it because if it, if it really does falter out of the gate, it's an expensive device. Near on $4,000. Again, I did buy the 512, so that was an extra 200 bucks. I'm not in for four grand if the thing really doesn't scream with strong potential. Uh, right in the very beginning. So those these first couple weeks of playing around with it are going to be really crucial. But I'm I'm very eager and excited. I think this is a paradigm shift. This is a whole new type of thing and it it ushers in uh new ways to think about entertainment and computing and technology and how we interact with it. Again, let me know what you want to see. Otherwise, please do all that regular YouTube stuff. Like, subscribe, hit the bell, share the video. Hopefully I can get noticed by Apple maybe a little bit more uh, or noticed in, um, in the Vision Pro community and, and whatnot. Um, and of course, if you'd like to support the channel, help me pay for this thing, this ridiculous thing. Uh, there's super thanks. You can leave PayPal Venmo tips. But most importantly, I would ask you shop with my affiliates if you're buying stuff. Amazon and audio advice for your home theater, Hi-Fi Gear in particular. They're a great company. Use them. Uh, helps me out and guarantees you great service doesn't cost you anything thanks so much for watching come on back for more home theater 
Apple Vision Pro-based home theater discussion and fun.